What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we have our ready to ride maintenance packages that we perform on our sport ATVs. Follow along for about 8 to 10 steps that we take every time before we go riding to see if you might be missing something in your maintenance schedule. So the steps that we have, oil oil filter, adjust all cables, grease all zerk fittings, clean and oil the air filter, clean, adjust and lube the drive chain, adjust tire pressure if it needs it, torque the wheels down, check the coolant level. So while we're doing all of those steps, we're also inspecting the entire ATV, um, kind of just looking over, seeing if anything's broken, if anything's coming loose, if anything's mismatched and needs to be swapped out, then we try to let the customer know as soon as we find it. All right, so we got our first step. We're gonna start with the oil change. So the first step is to let the bike idle, probably just a couple minutes, just to get the oil moving. So step two on the YFZ, we're going to open up the dipstick so that way it can get some air in. And then the YFZ has two drain plugs, one on the front of the motor and then one right there behind the shifter. So we're going to let both of those drain. So you can see you want to inspect your drain plugs right there. It looks like there's some trash or something on it and that'll definitely ruin your crush washers. So this crush washer, check it out. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like you can probably reuse it one or two more times. Move our bucket back just a little bit. All right, so now we got the transmission side draining, and uh, sometimes it does hit the skid plate, so just be ready to kind of move it back just a little bit more. All right, so we've got all the oil drained out. You can see it's just barely dripping now. So now we're gonna take just a clean towel and clean off both the surfaces on the motor where the drain plugs go. So on the rear, I really like to just go ahead and thread it in by hand, just so you, you know for sure that it's not at an angle because the frame rail is right there in the way. And these torque to 13 foot-pounds, so use a torque wrench if you're not familiar with it. Um, if you are familiar with it, you know, just barely snug and then just a little bit. Frame plug, and it's important that um, whenever you do the front one, I've always had some that had an issue. It'll be at an angle like this, and just make sure you take your finger and just push the crush washer up. You see how it has just a little bit of movement? So just push the crush washer up with your finger and then thread it all the way in and then you should be good to go. So you just don't want that crush washer hanging down because it leaves a gap right there. And I've had some YFZs drip just because of that little, that little gap. All right, so on the other side, Go ahead and get the oil filter out. And these bolts do not use an impact on these. I had to replace the cover on my personal. And these bolts are way too tight. So let me grab a bigger wrench just to make sure that it is in there straight. All right, just to make sure that it is in there straight. So these torque to, I believe around seven foot pounds. Let's see what this other one is, the one that I started with. So that's, that's probably 20, 25 foot pounds, so way too much. And these will strip out, so don't do that. <clears throat> Same thing, that one's probably 30 or more foot pounds. And I'm just trying to be careful with it, just to make sure it doesn't snap. Oh my God. Mm. 
<clears throat> so I'm gonna go with 40 foot pounds on that one. That one's extremely tight. So definitely don't do that. Yeah, so it, it might have been changed before. It's just not a good filter. You can see the it's starting to collapse right here. And then the ends have already fallen off of it. So no good. Whatever this one is, it doesn't have a brand name on it, but don't don't use it. So just checking for any metal chips. And I don't see any, so that's a good sign. It was a fresh top end, so usually you see just a little bit of flakes in there, but that's not a big deal. With the high flow filter, I haven't had any problems with these, but it's either this or OEM. That's kind of the two that I trust. K&N is good. There's a bunch of good ones out there. Um, I just wouldn't use whatever that one was that he was using. All right, so we got a new filter, and it's gonna go in there with the opening facing out. You see how that one fits good. And these are extremely important whenever you change oil uh, to make sure that these small O-rings do make it back on there and to make sure they're not flat. So maybe uh, once every three oil changes, once a year, depends on how, how much you ride. But whenever you do your oil changes, you need to be checking these. I tried the Tusk ones. Tusk offers a kit. They kind of fit. They didn't. It was, I mean, it was close. But I would just go ahead and get the OEM ones. So this one came off with our cover whenever we took our cover off. So we're just going to make sure it gets back on there. And then take our cover, make sure the surfaces are clean. Pour that oil, old oil out of there. Alright, so that's looking good. It goes this way. and You can blow that bottom hole out with an air compressor. Just if you start to feel resistance on it. Maybe every two oil changes, go ahead and do it. There might be some resistance on it. See right there at the end it kind of stops. So let's get the air compressor and put some air in there. So that's much better. So if we kept on uh, trying to thread it in there like it was, for sure it would have stripped and then that would have been it. So next up we gotta refill it. And this one we're just gonna use Yamalube 10W40. Um, unless this customer specifies something else or drops their own oil off, this is what we use. Um, if they do specify, we do carry, carry AMS oil, which is the, uh, the dirt series. And that's what I use on my race bike. But in my other bikes that are just, you know, trail bikes that I know aren't going to go on endurance races, I usually just use Yamalube. Is uh, usually start around 1400 cc. And then we're going to start the bike up, let it idle let it cool down just a little bit, and then we're gonna recheck the level. All right, so this is our mixed cup, and at the top we got 500 cc. So right now it's got one liter in it, and then we're gonna do 400 cc, and then we're gonna start it up and double check it. up and then shut it back off let the oil drain back down just a little bit and then we can go ahead and wipe our dipstick off and then we're gonna stick it in check it so right now we're at medium so maybe another uh, 
150 or so cc's, maybe 200. So we'll get our funnel back. Put that under that guy. And then we got our cc measurement right there on the side. So let's just go ahead and do 200. All right, so we pour about 150 in there. Check our dipstick is clean. So right there, we got just below full. So that should be good to go. So the next thing on the list is to clean, adjust, and lubricate the drive chain. And you can see on this one, we just start kind of halfway down, or right, maybe right here where this line is on the swing arm. You just go up and down, and we're looking for about an inch. This one has almost two inches, so we're gonna need to adjust it. And I did already clean it just with a, a chain brush and some soap yesterday, so we're not gonna worry about cleaning it again, but we will lose it. So we're just gonna grab these bolts down here. So we got all of them backed off, just a couple of threads. Then I have just a normal punch or a screwdriver, whatever you have. And we're gonna put it in one of the carrier bolts. And then we're gonna look at it. And it looks like if we rotate backwards, it'll tighten the chain. Give it a couple bumps. And you see right there, that's just about within an inch. And that's just where we want it. So these bolts torque to uh, 18 foot pounds. Uh, and we're gonna start in the middle. We got them all even and then torque down to 18 foot-pounds. That's it, but we're also gonna lube it while we're down here. All right, so we get the bike elevated, see the wheels turn, and then we're just gonna start down here and just go ahead and give the chain a good, good coating. So the next thing up on the list is to adjust all the cables. So our e-brake, we'll pull that. It needs to be adjusted. Our clutch lever, way too much play in that one. And then if we look over to our throttle, we don't want it to be extremely tight, but you can see that it has a good, almost half an inch of play. So too much play in our throttle also. So we're gonna start with our clutch. And if these threads have a little bit of grease or whatever, or a, a little bit of dirt, on them just go ahead and spray some kind of grease even chain lube would be fine just to make this thing easier to move because uh, if not i think he might have tried to adjust it with this which is fine but evidently didn't want to move and it tore the uh it tore the gasket All right, so our clutch we're just going to put just a little bit of pressure on it and then we're going to move it out And we're just looking to be able to fit a nickel in between the uh, clutch arm and the, uh, the edge of the perch. So I can pull this back. And you can see right there, you can fit about a nickel in there. And while we're in there, because this one has a little bit of dirt in it, we're gonna spray some dry lube right there behind the arm, around the top of it, around the cable, and just get all that moving again. You can remove the cables. This one's still pretty new, but you can completely disconnect the cable and lube the cable. But this one, just that little bit of effort has already freed it up. So we're not gonna worry about lubing the cables on this one. 
So next up we get our e-brake, so we're gonna pull the e-brake. Then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna loosen the lock nut on this one. Just like that. We inspect the brake pads while we're here. We still got some life in those. this one's ever been adjusted so maybe he doesn't use it if he doesn't use it he can just run this nut back out and it'll be fine all right so there we got a little bit of tension we're gonna give it probably a quarter turn so right there the bike stops moving but you can still push it if you force it so we're gonna make sure the nut stays there and then tighten the lock nut back down. All right, so just snug that one up. Don't worry about super tight. And you can see right there, it does hold it. You can still force it and that's what we want so we don't make too much drag on the bike. Flip the lever forward and you can see it does roll. Lock it down and that should be good right there. All right, so next up we got our throttle cable. So we want it, I think it's one eighth of an inch of play. So you can see right there, it's about half an inch. So we're gonna take the dust boot and pop it off. We got our locking nut and we're gonna be careful with these cause this shouldn't be tight. So we're just gonna barely take the nut loose, loosen that guy up and then put a little bit of pressure on the drum throttle and then move it out. Too much right there, you see how we have no play. So we're just gonna keep on playing with it. So right there, let's say about one eighth inch, maybe a little bit more of play. And that feels pretty good. So we're gonna take our lock nut and run it back down while we're holding the other end of the cable, take our wrenches and just really softly just give it just a tiny turn. It doesn't need a lot. And then go ahead and put the dust boot back on. And it's not a cable, but you can check your brake play. You know, if the rider complains about it being too high or too low. And actually his, now that we're looking at it, his um, brake light is disconnected. It has popped off right there. So we'll go ahead and fix that for him. So as far as the lever height, you can adjust this clevis right here to get this brake pedal moved up and down. Let's grab some pliers though and fix this tail light. All right, so we got the, uh, the spring back on there and you can see now whenever you hit the lever that the brake light comes on. All right, so next up I bet Probably 85% of YFZs haven't done this and the dealer forgot. So it's definitely something you want to check and something you want to correct as soon as possible because the uh, YFZs, they use plastic bushings in the front end and if they aren't greased, all you're doing is rubbing sand and water into plastic and the sand and water is going to win. So the front A arms in the YFZ, there's four places you need to grease. So we got our grease gun. This is just from Home Depot. Um, I have red and tacky in it, which is just a uh, grease that I find at O'Reilly's down the road. It's not that expensive and it works pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead. So I don't think his has been greased before. Usually if you get more than two or three pumps in it, that means it's completely empty. See right there, we see some grease coming out, so that's good to go. So that took like maybe 10 pumps. Check the bottom ones. And same thing, about three pumps, start to see some new grease come out.
So we're just going to grab a clean rag and just wipe off our fittings and any grease that did come out. We'll just wipe that off just so it doesn't make a mess. Alright, so we got our excess wiped off. And don't worry about, uh, like, sometimes they'll drip or they'll get dirt stuck to them. It's just part of greasing them. We have our tire pressure. So these tires get set between 4 and 7 PSI. It's kind of rider preference what they're set to. So we're just going to check some of his tires. Round 6. Uh, 7.2. So the, uh, the front should always... Well, the front should usually have more pressure in it than the rear, so we're going to go ahead and fix that for him. So one tire on the front left was around six, so that's what we kind of started with. So we just did six in the front, four and a half in the rear. See how he likes it. We can always change it whenever he gets here. Uh, don't pay too much attention to the exact pressure on everybody's gauge, because every tire gauge reads different. Just ride what's comfortable to you, use your tire gauge, and then just know, you know, remember your settings. So next step, we're going to just run around, check all the wheel torque. So Yamaha's or YFZ's run 39 foot pounds. So we're going to cheat and just use the e-brakes. Get... Alright, so we found maybe three or four that just needed a little bit of tightening and then one that was really loose on the uh, front right. So if I was going racing, and you know, my bike hadn't been inspected before, not only would I do the wheels, I would go ahead and do the A-arms, go ahead and do the shocks, rear shock, swing arm, all that good stuff. Just get you a little sticky note, write down your numbers, and just run over the whole bike with a torque wrench really quick. So last step in the ready to ride was to check the coolant level, and this one's good, so we won't have to add any. Walk around the bike just to inspect anything we noticed wrong, and I already did this before the uh, test ride just because it, it was kind of annoying. But uh, whenever you move your handlebars back and forth, the YFZs have these two O-rings. They, I mean, it'd be best to take them apart and grease the whole thing, um, but you can get by with just some gel lubricant. If the customer's not ready to you know, tear the stem out of the bike, then just spray some gel lube around there after your wash, and then just kind of work it in, move it back and forth, and that'll stop your, most of your squeaking. If it's still squeaking, you could also check the bottom um, of the bike. Oh man, this next clip is kind of hard to watch. These these days, probably about a year ago, it is a tough time. I just kept on getting repeatedly sick over and over again. At this point, I've been sick for like a year and a half, so I didn't even feel like looking at the camera. Didn't feel like talking to the camera. But here we are. We're gonna do a voiceover instead. So we're gonna take our air filter. We got some hot water, and we got our no tool cleaner. This is the uh, the blue cap. We're gonna put about a cap full. I put two capfuls in this one because that filter was way past dirty so please don't let your air filter get that dirty we're going to throw the cage in there just to kind of hold the air filter down and we're going to let that sit probably about 10 minutes but yeah we're doing much better now like back racing back to the gym back uh, working seven days a week uh, so next step we're going to go ahead and spray our air box down just get a rag go ahead and clean all that dirt out of there because there's no point in putting a clean air filter in a dirty air box Filter's been about 10 minutes. Go ahead and ring it around, stir it around. Um, if it's still dirty at this point, I mean, I would probably go ahead and fill the bucket out one more time, let it sit for five minutes, and then go ahead and wring it out. Luckily, this one did clean up um, enough to go ahead and let it dry, and then we're going to go ahead and grease it. So we got dry filter. We went ahead and sprayed it with our no tool. That's the red cap. Um, we just kind of drizzle it all over the filter, work it in with your gloves. And then uh, this filter being an OEM filter, it gets a little bit of rim grease that goes against the airbox. Clean the top of the airbox lid, lock it back down, good to go. So just my suggestion, if you get a brand new bike, I'll go ahead and take these little labels and they have a, a clear laminate on them and just go ahead and take the laminate off. If you don't, it'll like if your four-wheeler sits out in the sun, it'll etch them and it'll like, the glue will melt into them. 
and after that it's going to look worse than than anything if you just went ahead and took the plastic off of them so they have another one on the um the dash also so where your neutral light is there should be a clear cover on that as well and if you don't like the look of the white on the yellow you could always drill these rivets out real easy just hold the back of them drill them out and then they'll, they'll be gone so that's going to do it for this video i appreciate you watching hit the like button subscribe maybe if you have some more steps in your maintenance program that you do at home before you try leave it down in the comments below and we'll see you in the next